to enter Thank sacred you. space so we're just having a cleansing brush down. Going in certain way. I did a little clearing as well myself this morning. Turn around. See? One. Go. What happens when you've got a sacred site and they want to build houses? Yeah, look, it's brand. That's brand new, alleyway. isn't it? Oh, you can use the other way. Uh. Oh yeah. Oh, there he is. Hello, kitty. A big one. He's a male water dragon. It frills out. When they get uh, upset or something, it'll flare out. Yeah. Yeah, water dragon. Oh, he's gorgeous. So they've had a Chinese in it, you know? Dragons? Yeah. Hmm. So this is the uh, this is paper, paper bark. bark. This is what we use for our plates. And a big, big strip. Right, we can pull that all off, clean it up, take all this mushy stuff, dead stuff, and uh, dirty stuff off the off the um, paper bark and then we get this nice stuff here nice and clean then we can use that for pay plates or we use that to wrap our food the original like paper plate them, isn't it <laughs> but we use them for wraps yep uh, like your alfoil or etc etc mm -hmm. so we use that to wrap up our food and I showed you the string the the cottonwood that's the string that we'd use to tie up our little parcels to put on the ashes or under the ashes. Wow. It's bone knit. Uh, if someone broke their arm or their leg or something like that, see how thick it is, you can wrap that, strap that, and that's bone knit. Wow. The other thing we use it for is um, lining the coolamans for the babies, you know, uh, so nappy. Oh, it's a nappy. You can take that and dispose of it. Yeah. Uh, we go toilet, we have a stick with a point in it, stick it in the ground, screw it around, you get a cone, yep. poop, cone pop on. Oh. So that way everything, we don't believe that uh, land, food or any uh, externals from us that come from the land should be in the ocean or the waterways. No. So we're not allowed to use toilet um, 80 metres from within 80 metres from uh, water. We yep. have to be further than 80 metres away from the water line to be able to use toilet. That's good advice. Why aren't we doing that? Well, there's a lot of stuff going out there with the ocean fall out, outfall. So a lot of our stuff that went into the ground is compost and they're doing it now in Western New South Wales. Instead of using sewerage uh, pipelines and having some treatment place or anything like that, they're having it coming into a holding space, they're drying it out, they're mixing it up with different sorts of fibres, glass, grass, etc, roots, things like that, drying it all up and they're using that now for compost, not only that for manure in some of the other spaces in western New South Wales to help try and um, regrow some of the yeah. bushland mm. and stuff. Because cattle, when you brought cattle here to Australia, flies, we didn't have flies before. Yeah. So with all those hooved animals created flies. Yeah, and we've got a big fly problem. So basically Lois has just been telling me we're standing on the edge of the a Bora ring which was used for initiation. So Lois, you were saying that elders are basically chosen from the mother, mm. right, from birth. And you, how do you find? Um, the elders of the group would uh, watch the mother's habits whether she, her sleeping habits, her eating habits, um, yeah, the way she carried the child, 
and they'd be able to tell whether that she was carrying an elder or not. That's amazing. So the mother was the key. Yes. Sacred family. And then they'd be given their totem. Sometimes totems would be given to them before they're born because of the habits of the mother. Um, what she was doing, um, it might be something significant that the, the mother saw while she was pregnant and that would give the child its totem or then the, otherwise an elder would choose the totem for the child because they're watching the mother in any case, they're knowing her habits and her sleeping habits. Um, yeah, so they'd know and they would tell her that the totem of the child, otherwise the mother would know themselves. It's either given to them by the mother or an elder. Or an elder. Which would be a woman too. Which is usually a woman. <laughs> and sometimes men as well, they recognize, oh, she's carrying an elder. Yeah. You know, they know. And so then they taught very young. I've met little elders at two years old. Wow. And what they do with those little elders is they pass them around. And uh, they're very highly respected. And um, they're nurtured. Uh, and no harm is to come to them. They consider the elders' council uh, from the age of two or three, depending on, on their own discipline. You'll, you'll find that these little elders are very well disciplined, and they can sit down for long periods of time and listen. Wow! And take in a lot Already of information at a young age. At a yeah. young age, by the time they're seven, that's when they go through the initiation. The thirteen-year-old boys are going through initiation, but you have a seven-year-old mm. that's going through the same initiation, being separated from his mother because he's learned all these things, and now it's for him to be learning practice, how to make that canoe, how to really make a really good spear or boomerang, those sort of things, um, going out in the bush, learning how to live off the land and survive. Wow, and this Bora ring, so we can see, like, this was trampled into the ground, right? You can see how it's kind of sunken around the edge. Yes, yeah, that's right, it's trampled into the ground. How old do you think this one is? Thousands, right? Thousands and thousands. Could be more than 12,000 years old. But then again, you know, um, our occupation of the East Coast date back to 45,000 years. Yeah. Uh, that's because of the archaeological digs that I've done. Uh, we've taken uh, pippy shells and carbon dated those pippy shells, which were actual mounds. Um, they were only put there by human beings. So we was able to carbon date those pippy shells because they were alive once. Wow. Um, so we can tell with new technology how old those pippy shells are. Wow. We can also do it with sand, yep. carbon date sand. And you can carbon date sand, can't you? Yes, the you longer, can't do it with some rock, can you, I think? Well, the longer the sand is kept away from the light, it generates energy. And you can tell by the amount of energy that's generated in the sand how old it is. Like there was a 500,000 year old uh, human remain found in the Northern Territory. And um, when they found the, the skull, uh, they took sand from the eye socket. Oh, and that's how they can. And that's how they was able to carbon date that human remain. Because basically here on the east coast we have acid sulphate soils. And um, because we have acid sulphate soils, um, the bones and the flesh of the on the bone deteriorates a lot quicker than any other place. And so that's what's, you know, thousands of year old um, human remains uh, can be unheard of unless preserved properly. So we did embalming as well. Wow. A lot of our people, because anything under six inches, we're not allowed to go more than six inches under the ground. There's other life forms under there that should not be exposed to the earth, like stuff, which is poison. Mm. So anything under six inches from the from the surface of the of the earth, it was forbidden for us to go any further because there are other life forms. When you bring those life forms out, it poisons the earth. And yeah. that's why we don't like mining. We yeah. don't like the way that Europeans cultivate the land because it's it's too uh, massive and it kills a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's like the, the advice you get for looking after country yeah. from the Department of Environment and um, Planning or uh, Agriculture. Wrong advice. Yeah. We are not England. No, different all together. And then you've got the sacred aspect of it as well, don't you? Because there's a con consciousness in the land and you're disturbing so much more than just... The ground. Yeah. Ground. So it's about the contamination of those waters too, because water is life. Yeah. Well, water is sacred. Without water there is no life. So that's why we preserve, you know, what is above the the ground is, you know, really very sacred and what's below the ground is even more sacred because it should never be disturbed. Mm -hmm.
Labor Tories say, when does, when does the Australian Corporation, ABN number, people stop feeding off the mother's tongue? The mother is the earth. She's Mother Earth. Is Mother Earth. And all these resources it's that they're calling again. resources is poison. It'll poison our planet. And it's up to us now to use what sustainable energies we have now that's, you know, grasped at our grasp. We can use these energies ourselves to make this a better place for us all to live in. Start doing some back steps, you know, take a few steps back in technology. You'll find the solution. The solution is there. It's all about asking the right question. It's more simple than we think, isn't it? It's a lot more simple than you think. Cultural preservation. Um, little yellow berries too that you can eat. They're like a, a sour apple. Takaroo, can I eat this? Um, we don't usually eat them. <laughs> what you do, you can just put a little bit on your tongue. Yeah. And uh, that will create saliva in your mouth. So if you're traveling a long distance, mm. it'll create saliva. It keeps you hydrated. see a lot of blackfellas movies and they got something in their mouth yep that's all over ah, so like if you're going a long distance in the water holes about 20 k's away keep, you, keep yourself going yeah, makes sense and this is called tuckaroo tuckaroo, tuckaroo. Yeah. But that kangaroo to go with the salad lois has lovingly prepared us a kangaroo and bush tucker lunch and we're just sitting on the shore of lake ainsworth which is the tea tree lake first uh it is the first baptism place of our people, wow. nearly 45,000 years ago. Wow. Sacred lake. Unless you want to be the Sacred lake. I'm going to turn this off now so we can eat. So I'm standing in Lake Ainsworth and this is an amazing tea tree stained lake in New South Wales just near Lennox Head. And the bit that I'm standing in was said to be sacred to Aboriginal women's business meant to be a place of fertility obviously fertility and abundance and um, Lois our guide was telling us a story about how she saw a, uh, a water spirit in this lake once a beautiful water spirit it's so pretty and I'm just standing here with my feet in the water you can see that the water of this lake is stained beautiful vibrant magenta red I always think of that magenta reddy orangey goldy as kind of like sacral chakra colors very so where these rocks are piled up yeah these are rocks that are piled up by our people how long ago do you reckon this would have been put there before white people came yeah. Oh, it was, it's been going on for thousands of years, so the first ceremony started here more than 12,000 years ago. Like I said, we occupied the coast for at least 45,000 years. Mm. Um, but then the stories tells us that when the warriors landed here, they went straight up. So it must have been 45,000 years old. We haven't really carbon dated around here. Mm. Uh, <laughs> they built their, their walkways and that over our sacred creeks as well, so we had fresh water around here at all times, running into the sea. Mm. So all these things were set up, see that, how it goes across the top there? Yeah, and when the tide's high, the fish come in. Yeah, the high tide, the fish come in, and when the tide goes out, the fish are trapped. Wow. Technology. Simple and genius. Ingenious, simple technology. Nothing hard. Yeah. Nothing was made hard for our people, really. Everything <laughs> was there at the fingertips. to 
uh, pull the remains out of out of the midden, uh, clean up the bones, take all the any flesh or anything that might be on it, that just clean that off, scrape it off, then paint that with ochre, yeah, and then put them inside their travelling log to take oh, home and take them home. Yeah, do it that way. Mm. It was easy. It's too hard to move a human body. <laughs> retrieve that oh. giving um, proper respect proper burial proper respect yeah. that's right so when we're buried then they might put depends on how special you are we also bury our people on platforms they're the hierarchy uh, because we ate the ate the remains of animals we believe the animals were entitled to also pick at our bones that's a good idea. so we put them up there yeah. on, the, on the platform in the trees for the animals, animals to have in. a feast. Yeah. Like we have a feast on animals so they can have a feast too. It's giving back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we buried our people then, we were only buried six inches from the from uh, the surface. Usually uh, more than 80 metres or sometimes, depends on, on how the floods work, um, we'd be quite knowledgeable on, on how far, how high the floods would come. So we was always buried in a fetal position. Uh, not far from water facing the creek. So there you go, Byron Bay again, up there. This is Seven Mile Beach for the run, where they did all the tournaments. Just down the bottom here, they had what you call the a pumice stone boring. So a lot of these places, you know, there's always a boring. Boring is a place where we do ceremony and when you go somewhere instead of watching television we have ball rings where we can pick and choose which tribe we'd like to go and see perform it's really good yeah yeah so if some neighboring tribe came in and gave them a camping place they'd have a ball ring not far we were very constructive where we we had a number of ball rings between Lennox Head and Ballina something like 13 mm. so each tribe would have their own ball ring and uh, they could do their performances and so I can choose whether I want which people from the north or the west or the south or you know neighboring tribe whichever one go and, wa go and watch them do their songs and dances and join them you see that water hole over there yeah that's a women's birthing site over there that's that uh, water hole that rock that's sitting up there in the middle that big squarey looking one. Yeah. That was Shag Rock. Uh, 2007, Shag Rock collapsed. To us, uh, it was um, the Lightning Man. There's, uh, there was uh, a Nimbanya. He was a, a clever man. And um, he used to go out to all the tribes, you know, if they needed rain he'd bring it in abundance if they needed food he'd bring that in abundance if they were sick or ill he'd go out and he'd heal them and he had this um this uh, beautiful bird it was his favorite but in those days animals and humans are the same we have a spirit and so we all have our totems too so it's probably this bird was its totem so one day that nimbanya he went out and to heal the people and bring them food and make rain etc there was this cheeky snake he used to be always sneaking around now the Nimbanya he didn't like him because he was always sneaking around so whenever that snake would turn up he'd say go away snake go away but one day when um, the Nimbanya was out that cheeky snake he sneaked into the camp and he killed his prized bird now when the Nimbanya came back to his camp, he found his prize bird dead. He was so angry, he called up the Gwena to go and chase the snake away and kill it. Now, the Nimbanya didn't realise that the Gwena was pregnant at the time, but she didn't complain. She was given her task, and she honoured that task, and she went out to get vengeance on this snake who had killed the Nimbanya's prize bird. So, when the snake took off, the trail was clearly marked. It was easy to find. So she took off, followed that trail, 
she started to get tired because you know it was close to the time for her babies to be born so she decided she'd take a shortcut and head him off now the snake he went further on went up there to uh, burring bar burring bar means big boomerang so went up to burring bar the snake turned back towards the sea to head south now the Gwena, she cut across from Nimbin Falls, Minion Falls, and she caught the snake at Tiagra, just north of Byron Bay, and they had a huge fight. That's why we have men's sites and women's sites. The female goanna, the male snake. And, that, and uh, they created lightning, lightning stones as well. Was. It was a vicious fight. That snake built bit the goanna on the head and took off. And it hid around the foothills around near Byron Bay. Now the Gwena, she was sick, so she came by the Poison Snake area, which is just there at Ironbark Avenue, and she went down to Suffolk Park. Where she laid, she created the men's lake, which is the fighting part of her, the front end of the men, and then she created the female lake, which is a birthing site of the Tarzac, and then she sought to seek some remedy, so she looked for plants and things to help her cure herself from her snake bite. She was there for two or three days, something like that. The snake snuck by. Anyway, she caught that snake just south, um, north of Lennox Head, and called it the Razorback. So where they fought there, they pushed up the Knockrow Hills and uh, made the escarp just west of Lennox. And uh, the snake got away again and it headed south. So the Gwena, she came over the saddle and she decided to lay her eggs there. She had her baby. The baby was here. So she came here and she had her baby. So she thought to herself, I'll just leave them here. They should be okay. I'll come back later and I'll get my babies in. So she took off, went south. The snake went south. He created the rivers, the estuaries, the creeks, uh, and then it doubled back. Now the Gwena went searching for that snake. Couldn't find the snake. She was getting really tired. She'd been chasing this snake, biting with this snake, giving birth. She was so tired that she laid down near the sea and she fell asleep. And the tide came and then she drowned. So the snake doubled back near to Bolt's Beach. He found the goanna's eggs, decided to coil himself around those eggs and thought to himself, I'll wait here. She has to return for her babies and when she does, I will seize her and I will kill her. Well, this goanna drowned and the snake's still here today, the poison snake waiting for the return of the goanna. Wave that we get in the surf here at Boulder Beach, that's the snake's bite. Wow. Waiting for planning for her. A lot of people die here all the time. They go out on these rocks and they get hit by that freak wave and uh, they get trapped in the snake's belly. They can't get out and they die. sweet pinky ones and all that they've got nectar in them yeah we'd um, put them in water and um, let them what do you call steep for a little bit and we use that for a sweet drink bottle brush drink bottle brush tea drink tea, tea yeah, yeah or or yeah honey oh yeah bush honey you know there's about 45 years built over the top of it because um, we didn't get any rights until the, um, the 70s yeah uh, so they didn't consult with us on a lot of stuff so a lot of the uh, houses here at East Ballina 
um, were built over the top of human remains. So just built on the massacre sites. And, and, and you like said there's there remnants as well in the bush. Yeah. Remnants of our people. Well, they, um, you know, where they died against trees or on the ground and things like that. They were left behind that they didn't pick up and put in that hole over there at East Ballina. So, um, yeah, a lot of these houses are built on top of so do you their bodies. Do you guys do, you know, clearing of the of the spirits of people to send them on as well? Or, like, yes. Cause, yeah, because yeah. I was going to say there'd be a lot of ghosts walking around in these parts. There is. There is. I've had to go to a couple of places um, where people were being harassed and... Uh, yeah. and uh, also possessed yeah. and uh, do some clearing for them and it yeah. actually works you know because you've got oh, person, yeah. people of the land only people of the land can um, clear those entities at times and talk to them yeah because you know the way that they would mm. they would want to be moved on as well yeah and respecting who we are because we are the people of the land we are the bloodline yeah other people coming in here um well, they're not the right people. Not, not the right people to do it. Yeah. There were seven massacres in this region, apparently, and um, a lot of the sites have just had houses built on top of them. The land hasn't even been honoured. So some of these stories wasn't even told by us. Some of these stories told by white fellas and the native police. So they didn't get our boundaries right because they asked the wrong people.